Hello everyone, we're a group of students of Universidad Técnica Federico Santa Maria. Today, we're going to tell you a wonderful story about science. As you all know, science explains what happens in nature. This project is about a very unique phenomenon, the von Karman vortex. The objectives of this project are to create the conditions in which the von Karman vortex generates, paying special attention in the scientific methodology. At the same time, we are going to model this phenomenon using the open phone software, with data provided by the experimental experience. All thanks to Theodor von Karman. He was a Hungarian-American engineer and physicist born in 1881 who made important contributions at the field of aeronautics and astronautics. He discovered that in a particular Reynolds number, something spectacular happens. But what is the von Karman vortex? Oh, what a wonderful question! A von Karman vortex tweet is a pattern of vortex that repeats itself caused by an unsteady separation of the layer of fluid passing over submerged bodies. When the vortex are made, it establishes a principal one in the biggest region, moving downstream as time goes by. Oh, and when are they produced? The von Karman vortex tweets occurs only when the Reynolds number achieves certain values, usually over 90, but not very high. When the fluid is laminar, vortex are recorded in periods. What an interesting fact! But what is the Reynolds number? The Reynolds number is a measure of the ratio of inertial and viscous forces in a fluid flow. And how can you determine the frequency? Very good experiment to see the relation between the vortices of a fluid is to consider the geometry of a body. In this case, we use a cylinder. By having a Reynolds number that produces a laminar fluid, it can be related with the Stroheim number. In order to get some data, the guys needed to define some things. First of all, they chose a specific fluid for the experiment, in this case, air. In order to visualize the fluid, they used a smoke machine and a powerful laser. The wind tunnel, the smoke machine and the laser were provided by the university and they represented the best way of keeping the experiment under control. Once everything was set, our brave and young students proceeded with the experiment. But it brutally failed. The vortex did not appear and there were no signs of it. We had a number of problems in the first test. The minimum speed of the tunnel is 3.5 meters per second, which added the other condition delivered a Reynolds number of 6,000. In other words, we are not even close to get a vortex. Given the conditions, they needed a smaller fan. Lucky for them, the university comes with a smaller actual fan, which gives a minimum flow of 80 cubic meters per hour with a transversal area of 380 square centimeters. With this condition, the minimum speed of the new wind tunnel was 0.58 meters per second. Under these conditions, they had a little notion about the vortexes, but it wasn't appreciable to the human eye. Um, we improved, but we still can see the vortex clearly. We need to correct some things, the laser as it isn't being useful. We need to do something with it in order to see the smoke in two dimensions. The speed remains too high. We should consider releasing the smoke without a fan, through another machine that releases the smoke at a lower speed. The engineers of the university were now developing their own smoke machine, so it releases the smoke at a lower speed. They used dry ice to create the smoke. When it was tested, the vortex gave some evidence to appeal, but because of the turbulent flow, it wasn't regular vortices. 
and the ones that appeared were merciless killed by the flow itself. Meanwhile, in another part of the world, some students were working on the open phone program. With the theoretical data, these students had a close idea about the shapes of the phone common vortex. At first, we had to create a match. For that, we used the GMatch generator software. After that, we had to choose the type of regimen, maybe compressible or incompressible. We want to simulate and then define the parameters and physical property for modeling. Once they are defined, we can calculate the equation using the terminal and also then display it in the Paraview software. To obtain the speed of the vortexes, the team used the old technique of measuring the distance that the fluid went by in a certain time. This task was possible because the wind tunnel they built was made with marks of centimeters. With a laser in two dimensions, it was possible to obtain a laminar flood with a speed of 0.15 meters per second, suitable to obtain vortices in a tunnel of, with a Reynolds of 260. Through the use of the mathematical method, they were able to obtain a vortex frequency of 1.98 Hz. This was equally represented in the software open phone giving a very satisfactory result. Comparing the theoretical with the experimental period, 0.91 and 0.87 seconds respectively, an error of 4.39% was obtained. This error is expected because the speed was variable in time and its measurement was in an average form and not instantaneous. Finally, after weeks of hard work and countless tests, the engineers succeeded in generating all the conditions needed. In this way, the impressive discovery of the Theodore von Kármán Baltic streets dazzled people all around the world, making an amazing science contribution. And thus, my children, we conclude our wonderful journey in which these very handsome and brave students fought the forces of miscalculations and all the frustrations that a scientific group has to go through in order of achieving science's true goal. The truth.